the man we have as our guest knows perhaps more about how the people feel on the issues than any guest we've ever had, and probably more than any man in the country, because he's the leading political pollster in the country, and he makes a living out of trying to find out what's on the minds of the people, and he's the best there is. Newsweek magazine just called him uh, one of the leading men in the Carter campaign, one of the four key elements in Jimmy Carter's race. And as such, he's been conducting polls all over the state of Missouri for, for Jimmy Carter. He was the man who first, first told Carter he could win the primary in Florida and then went on and predicted precisely what the vote would be. So he does a good job of, of determining what's on the minds of the people. He's bright, he's young, Time Magazine listed him as one of the 200 top young men in America and he was the youngest of the 200 so listed. And we're happy to have him from Boston, Massachusetts. Let's welcome to Missouri, pollster Pat Cadell. Pat. How old are you? Uh, 25. Be 26 next week. How does it feel to be a 25-year-old and have a man who likely or a good chance of being the next president of the United States contact you and ask you what to do? <laughs> I hope he doesn't see this. <laughs> the, uh, no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it, it's it's a great feeling and it, it, it's enjoyable in terms of the process. Uh, Governor Carter is one of the. Uh, one of those people who really doesn't need a lot of guidance. He uh, is pretty determined about what he's going to do and uh, seeks advice and uh, uh, makes his own decisions, but uh, it really is a great experience uh, doing that. And what uh, are you finding to be the principal issues in this senatorial campaign? We really find two instincts in the American public uh, in the country. One is uh, an instinct for change, uh, born not out of any, ideolo any ideology per se, but out of a sense that things aren't working well, and we need to make some adjustments and try some new things and question the way we do some things. At the same time, there's another instinct, which is to preserve and protect and go back to the kind of basic values that have made America the great country that people thought it is, and, and particularly was uh, before we got into the problems we were in. So what we find is, on one hand, an instinct for change, and on the other hand, an instinct for preservation, for restoring basic values. And I would describe that in this state as a, a kind of thematic issues that are as important as, uh, as any of the specifics we could talk about, and they're very important in the Senate race. This is the tremendous frustration the public has with the fact that uh, in a time of confusion, in a time of, not, of uncertainty, that uh, the people's uh, leaders really haven't been very candid in the sense of saying what they feel or where they want to go, that, uh, that they assume that the public is not really bright enough to understand that uh, sometimes there's a game going on here. And that what they're really looking for, as you pointed out, is, a, uh, is, is an answer or, or, or a direction, even if they don't agree with it. It gives them some sense of, uh, of why or some insight into the character of the people making the decisions than whether they necessarily agree with the politicians. And it, it comes from the sense, and I've said this before, and I think it was a serious problem in, uh, in the last administration in Washington, which is that uh, uh, it's not so much people tell me, well, why the, why has the public lost faith in the in the system? And it's not really that the, the public has lost faith in the system. It's in many ways that the politicians have lost faith in the people. They don't trust the people the way they ought to. And I, and I think that that is a serious problem. And it comes from uh, that unwillingness to communicate, to, to really sit down and say, this is where I stand, or this is what we ought to do, and, and to give that kind of leadership at a time when I think most of us in this room and in the state and the country want some kind of specific direction. Ralph Dawkins from Gladstone. I'd like to ask you, gentlemen, what is your analysis of the reasons for many of the states having a stop Carter attitude for their delegates? Well, I think the reason, uh, the major reasons you've seen the, uh, the, 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 the rise and in some states the collapse of the stop Carter effort has been uh, the fact that Jimmy Carter is a person who has not been part of the political establishment of Washington. Uh, he, is a, he is a candidate who has no ties to, to the lawyers or to the special interest or to any of the special interest, really, and, and not necessarily bad special interests, but people in Washington who are used to being known and uh, being able to have access to candidates and so forth, either in a political sense or, in, or on the fringes of politics. And Jimmy Carter is someone who uh, uh, those people, as one person described, they, they uh, have no hooks into Jimmy Carter. They don't control him. He's a person on his own. 
and, uh, and for a lot of political people in the party, that's a disturbing uh, function. He's, he's uh, or as I said, uh, a lot of them are unha not so much unhappy that he's won, but he's won without them, uh, and that uh, they didn't think anyone could win without them. He is coming to the nomination and, and, and may well to the election as uh, President of the United States without owing anyone, any interest, any interest group, or any block, or any political block in the country anything. And his real responsibility is to the people who elected him. He got by, he's been able to get through the process without doing that, which is be interesting and be refreshing uh, to see that in, uh, in Washington. 